My name is Ransony. Welcome back to Rogue Book. All right. What is the challenge we're going to be going into? Okay. It's going to require two heroes. Let's quickly go and get a hero. I want to see what the challenge is so that then I can select the characters around the challenge rather than the inverse. Having seen relatively recently that selecting them around the inverse doesn't necessarily always work. Okay. So we're doing level 11 here. Everything got 60% more. Started chapter with two less brushes and gladiator. Seems like it's not impossible. It's a restriction of our uh, of our resources, but I think that I'll be able to overcome the restriction of our resources with the different modifiers we have here in our permanent progression. Speaking of our permanent progression, we have 700 pages to fill stuff out here, so. Uh, I think I'm mostly just going to look for the cheapest things and buff those. Okay, so everyone gets 10% more health. Uh, over here, we can increase the rarity of the replaced cards, as well as the fact that they are more likely to have extra sockets in them now. Hmm. Also a higher chance of finding cards with extra sockets there, finishing out that tree and a higher chance of rarer gems. Looks good to me. Hmm. I haven't played Shara in a couple of episodes. I could do a Shara Soroka. That's been a while, I think. Greetings. We move. Let's get out there. Let's do that. Empty pot, heavy pot, there we go, okay, and this is going to give us 310 just for clearing. Near the very end, we're going to have things that basically cost us a full load of uh, pages in order to complete, but I do think that we will probably complete all of the epilogues as well as all of the meta progression in the <laughs> system around fun. the same period of time. Whenever this hero blocks, on gain one more block. Easy pickup right there. Primal Skull, this card costs four more, gain eight. I could have sworn that was being removed from the game. Rough Diamond, a, another eight block on a gem there as well. We'll have a look at what Nadim is holding for us. Look at all the treasure here. Looks like he's been collecting for some time. Hmm. Hell of a lot of treasure. Uh, we've got a impact that immediately leaps out at me here. A volley also, attack a random enemy for one, attack again for each power that Soroko has. Uh, so then I would be looking to try and get power on Soroko, which isn't super simple to do. I don't know. We might find the relics for it. Uh, Yakai at each turn, block three. Honestly, each turn, block three, and at the end of each battle, this hero gains four life are so impactful. Uh, Garden's Talon. Do we have any AoE in the base deck? Oof. You're kidding me. We transformed only one card for Soroko, but a bunch of cards over here. So we've got a Smoke Bomb, we've got a Thousand Cuts, we've got a Lacerate, and then we've also got a Flex whenever a hero attacks his turn, gain three block. I mean, the Flex could easily be comboed with something like a Repost. I'm currently not strongly leaning any direction. I don't think any of those really have a huge impact on us. Oh, the Kobold Fetish, though. This hero gains reap, gain 10 gold. That is definitely the thing for which we would like to aim first. I am going to have to worry about the efficiency of my movements here, because otherwise we're not going to be able to get the diamond shield up in the other corner as well. Um, hmm. Gosh, that's so far away. We're going to have to see what ink we get from this normal battle before we can really make any decisions. Also, Shara should be leading. Wait, should she? Because there's so little block in, in Soroko's deck at the moment that Shara is going to have a hard time getting out of the front line. She also does have a smoke bomb. She can retreat from the front line as well. Yeah, she should probably be leading. Hmm. Okay, I want to see if this works. I'm going to flex and then strike. And that gives us four. Okay, so the flex says that it gives three, but because it was triggered by Soroko... It's gaining one more block. That's really, really cool, because we're going to be able to do a lot of damage this turn and take very little back. Nice. A uh, thousand cuts can kill the backline here and then throw out a guard. And that makes the rest of the battle quite simple. 
That's 8,000 cards. Uh, well, when I said quite simple, what I uh, actually meant was we'll still be taking more damage, but it'll be okay. That's what I meant, you see. Or not. Smoke one to the rescue. Excuse me, would you please stop attacking? For just a millisecond, friend? Right, we'll defend our way to the front, throw out a lunge, and then guard our way back to the front. You're being really, really hyper-aggressive. Uh, uh, excuse me? <laughs> you're actually not supposed to be able to be as aggressive as you're currently being. That's okay, I guess, though. Uh, let's... Fine, I'll defend my way to the front, throw out a lacerate, and then smoke on my way to the back. I'm very lucky that I've been drawing hands that actually have the ability to contend with the amount of damage the enemy's been putting out here. Because I easily could have not and taken 30 damage in that fight. Okay, perfect. That ink will get us to the... Whoa, baby! Imperial ink, four spaces in opposite directions. Extremely big pickup for us right there. We don't need to claim it just yet. No one's going to come along and take it. Goro is not interested on this floor. Uh, we'll go for the lowest HP enemy in the back line because I really don't think I'm going to be able to kill them before the end of the first cycle. I just don't have that much damage in the deck. Well, I mean, I have a lot more damage when I can lunge and then throw out the thousand cuts for 27 damage. Unfortunately, this Rebel Slinger is going to be doing like, yeah, 30 damage a turn. There's no way I can stand up to that. Uh, yeah, I should definitely lacerate you. So I guess I flex, lacerate, and then smoke bomb my way to the back line. Hoi. I would love to lunge thousand cuts, but can I afford not to defend it all this turn? That actually might be my best play. I can't do it. I can't. That's 8,000 cards. We'll kill him. Thank heck as well. I could have gotten pretty nasty there after we get an ink pickup. Hmm. How am I going to get across to that? The most likely thing seems to be a a brush and then probably two precision inks. Oh. Yeah, absolutely hate to see that. No value picked up in that brush there. Sky Tower is always going to give you some value. It just sees so much stuff. Gemstone for Skull Shard Hard, definitely. Uh, and then we'll use our final precision ink getting this Kobold fetish pickup. Now I have to figure out who's going to be doing the majority of our kills. I'm assuming it is going to be Shara. But that assumption could easily be quite flawed. At the moment, at the very least, it will be Shara. So I think I can put it on her for that reason. Let's also get Shara to leave the party to get some extra damage out early. That can totally just go in the guard, up the amount of defense we get on that individual Suitable. guard card. And then the rest of those don't want to be placed in anything just yet. The Primal Skull, because I do not have a way to activate it just yet, or the Scholar Shard, because it will be better in other cards, especially zero-cost cards. Okay. Okay. I think I use the Imperial Ink 4 in both directions in order to access this. I think I do it from the top side. So I can do it from here. And actually, I think I will do it from here, right? Because I could do it from one space further up and then claim this whole line as well. But by claiming a line that is very, very close to territory I've already otherwise claimed, I leave myself with more effective territory to explore thereafter with uh, things like your brushes.
I mean, I'm I'm glad to have found an elite, uh, but I do think I'm going to need to start getting some cards in this deck if I really want to take them out. Oh, that's hard. I really, really, really want to take the Bullfrog Berserker and then try and build around it, but you have to understand it's quite likely to be complete garbage. We can't play it. We, we actually cannot play it yet. Uh, using the Primal Skull in order to get to get, be able to play it, we will still need to get cost increases on other things before it. The Obviously, you know, it's, it's doubling its spirit every single turn, but if it starts on a very small amount, uh, how much is it actually doing? If it claims a lot of the kills, it's taking a lot away from our Cobalt Fetish. We're probably actually better off here just going for the Repost. Ups our defense a little bit, gives us a little bit more uh, defensive kit for Shara, and also gives us a base synergy in the deck with Flex. We also do have Dagger Storm in the shop, which is the rare based on bringing all dissolved daggers back into your hand. Uh, you're the Avatar of Greed, God damn it. Well, the Avatar of Greed... Hmm. The Avatar of Greed does not want us to play daggers. Screw it, I'm gonna try and make this work. Give a hero six power. Like, it's really good, but now my energy is such a deep, deep, deep problem for us. Dragon Spirit. Excellent. That's one uh, attempt to fix our energy. Yeah, as I figured there was nothing left in here. Obviously, the Gem of Growth is something that's wanna go, uh, gonna want to go into Bullfrog at some point. Especially considering it has two slots. But I, uh, I cannot do that now. Okay. Because I can't play the Bullfrog yet, so it wouldn't really make sense to fix it up just yet either. Nine and seven is a kill on a target, so we'll lacerate you, guard our way to the front line, strike you, and then we're full defended. Again, unfortunately, we haven't got an AoE card yet, which is really, really what you want here. Well, two of them chose to buff. Much appreciated. Um... That's fine. Not many things do eight for us that don't do nine. Oh, yeah, and these are the kinds of turns you really don't want to have. So the flex will block for eight here. And then we're going to have to double target you just to get a single kill, preventing some more incoming damage. Oh, Let's take down the highest damage enemy target there. Soroko's still happier taking this damage than Shara would be. Wait, Shara needed to be killing unique targets. Also, I did just move her to the front. The thing that I said I wasn't going to do. Huh? Whoops. Uh, so the Reap won't trigger on summoned enemies anyway, so it's entirely fine for me to just bop these with reckless disregard. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to lunge, then defend. And I'm just going to be waiting to get the kill with Shara here. Yeah, it shouldn't have taken long. We've got good scaling options in Ogre Soup and stuff like that. Like, we do have the ability to take out bosses at this point. Our defense is eh, fine. Our offense scales. It's not initially fine, but it gets finer over time. Okay, if I really want to get this at all, it's got to be using this, like, there-ish.
You have to be kidding me. Look at the... Oh, it's so empty. I have to fight elites in order to get any of the rewards now. You, this is... I have to fight elites that are going to fight a lot faster than we are. We're in the realm where I may have to just buy that volley and then like... What, like, is my game plan buff Sirocco? I don't want it to be buff Sirocco. Oh, God. I can't even play volley yet. God. Yeah, I took a lot of non-aggressive options and I am hard paying for it right now. Hmm. That's it. The reason that I hadn't taken that yet is because I didn't want it to explore territory directly next to the Sky Tower and it lit it, like it did it exactly as directly next to the Sky Tower as it had the possibility of doing. Look, you gotta appreciate when the game just decides to troll you like that. Nice. I don't even know if I can complete that elite battle. I'm I, like... This, this is now just rolling the cards to see if this is possible for us. There you go. Like, Ogre Soup defend? Are we really... I think we are. Lacerate should probably definitely go out here. Come on. Yeah, of course, you take no turns off. And this is exactly the turn I would need you to take off. Because I have no defense available. Okay, I've got to move Shara to the front line here, so I take less of this against vulnerability. Which means, onto the front line, and 1,000 cuts of 45 damage. As you can see, again, we do have damage in this deck. But, god, it's slow. God, it's real slow. Oh, uh, boy. Feral Kadama takes no turns off, if I recall correctly, so it was, yeah, a little errant to ask for a turn off from an enemy I knew was not going to provide it. Cobalt okay. Fetish goes off, thankfully. A little bit more rough diamond. Another brush. Like, yeah, I can happily use the rough diamond. Just drop that in. Smoke bomb. Very well. Oh dear. Uh, Let's patch up. We went from all of the hope in the universe that we were gonna find like an alchemist or just some special anything here, uh, to now feeling like, damn, are we definitely going to lose? Because it feels that way at the moment. The Ogre Cookie is a way to help me cheat out some more cards. The only problem is, like, I'm doing that in order to get a Bullfrog out and Thousand Cuts. Like, it's 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 all good stuff that it does. But can I afford to wait that long to be powerful? Or do I need to just take something like Fire Breath and get an AoE in this deck? I don't know if I can wait that long to be powerful. Also, that Dragon Spirit should easily just roll off. I said I was going to try. Quick reflexes once per battle. Click on Sirocco to add 15 block and move into the front. That's going to save us. Once per battle, click on Shara to attack the leading enemy for 15 and then retreat. That's going to scale off. 15 block matters for a lot longer than 15 damage does. The start of turn 5, the heroes gain 3 power. <laughs> also actually pretty good.
But again, like that takes time. We need to fix instant problems. I'm taking quick reflex. We can fix our long-term problems after we fix our instant definitely going to kill us soon problems. I mean, I want to get down there. It's just very far. Ay, seed sower. I would love to be able to play that ogre soup. Oh, man, would I love to be able to play that ogre soup. Ooh, Ogre Cookie into Thousand Cuts, which should now cost zero for the rest of the uh, fight. That's appealing. That's appealing. There it is. Costing zero, it's actually doing it. You absolutely love to see it. Hey, that's actually, like, really incredible. Because uh, I remember that didn't actually used to work. So I'd been hesitant on picking it back up again. But the fact that it does work, it, we, maybe now we have a path out of the grave here. Excited to explore it. Unfortunately, that died to the uh, bleed rather than to Shara directly. So we don't get the 10 gold there. I'm a bit uh, trying to manage the meta resource of existing. Um, so possible I'm losing some value on those. In fact, it's guaranteed I'm losing some value on those. I think I do this brush because it does unlock this normal battle and then it also puts this one only three spaces away so I can get it with an ink. Ooh, a narrative. I like a good narrative. We got some good cards to buff with the narrative as well. Uh, so I'll take my 27 kill. And... That Rebel Slinger is going to do a huge amount of damage unless I actually get an Ogre Soup out here. First card place costs one more this turn. It's fine. We're playing the Dragon Spirit regardless. Oof. I'm very tempted to Ogo Cookie uh, suit. Wait, hang on. I, I'm going to be in the front line with barely any defense regardless. Okay, fine. I'm going to Ogo Cookie and then soup. I'm setting myself up with the ability to just murder the backliner. I don't want to be in the position I'm in, but with the draws that I had, yeah, this is the position I'm in. Okay, there we go. One shot the backliner, removing a large amount of their outcoming damage. We use the guard to get back to the front line. Uh, uh, then I I should have lacerated before I move, but that's okay. Perfect. Honestly, went about as well as it's possible to have gone there. Uh, let's smoke bomb. Now I just got to try and make sure Shara gets as many of these kills as possible. One kill. Two kills. Good work, Shara. Honestly, if this is offering me a full heal, I'll take it. Also, I'm going to use an ink to go down there, just in case this is also going to offer me an ink. Oh, baby. At the start of each hero's turn, gain block equal to this ally's spirit. I will pray for it to be my shield. I need its defense more than I need its damage. Um, we have nothing as far as I can see. One sec. Where do I want to use this brush? I'm probably going to use a four to connect up here. But, like, I, I am going to need some health. It's like a four connects here. Throw out a brush. Finally, we found a hidden well. God, I've been looking for these the whole time. I need extra energy. 
please. Um, like, I really don't want to use this noble link to connect up to there, but I worry if I don't get that diamond shield, like, I'm already screwed. Shara's on one. Oh, boy. I don't have that many radiant hearts around either. And I keep having to trade away HP in order to not uh, lose. Oh, boy. Okay. Ogre cookie. Ogre soup. Soroko, go to the front line. I totally forgot that I had access to that, and that's entirely my bad. It is. It is. All right, you are aggressive, but you do also give us the block. Um, just gonna set it up such that I have the ability to kill the back line with any errant attack. Line. Don't need that. When I can smoke bomb retreat my way out of there and not lose that life on Shara. That's right, and all these strikes. Probably going to show them that I mean business. Unfortunately, so do they. Taking another seven damage on Soroko on our front line. The ogre cookie and ogre soup, like they're working well together. They certainly are. But I do not have much defense this turn, pretty much no matter what I try. Man, I haven't really found any de dense defensive cards yet either. I just found like a bunch of tech cards that I'm trying to get to work. This, this was probably not the right idea. Like, taking the daggers instead of that probably would have resulted in a much easier time through this floor. But I I, I want to use the Bullfrog Berserker every time I see it. Was it? I don't want to use it every time I see it. But every time I see it, I would like to try and use it for the first time. I'm, I'm just looking for a Radiant Heart to be found along one of the lines that I'm about to explore. Because otherwise I think we're already dead. So this is just like a try and save me from me play. Alright, I don't feel like I was saved from me. Let's take the Yak Hide. We'll take Impact, Repost, and the Gem of Growth. I believe, I believe! Very well. I shouldn't. To be very clear, I definitely shouldn't, but I do believe. Wait, as Elite's a mandatory. I wasn't going to be able to avoid taking this fight anyway. Okay. So I want to kill the Frontliner or Repost. Happy to take a hit there, get myself a dagger. Hmm. Ah, should have used flex first there. Wait. Yes. Yes, I still should have. Um. And. Dagger, and then... Wait, I didn't need to swap you to the front! Ah, I, I'm not used to... Ah. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. The thing about it is how fine it is. I have an ogre cookie. Let me play the... <laughs> I know I'd already gone past the ogre cookie, so it wasn't going to happen, but... Still would have been nice, you know? 
Man, if you're going to do double debuff with your first two turns available to actually hit me, I am all about that. All aboard. You're definitely well allowed. I can't afford to move Shara to the front. In the worst case scenario, she can't move away and we die. <laughs> I mean, the Ogre Cookie would play the Bullbo uh, Bullfrog Berserker this turn, but we'd also die. Uh... It's going to make flex cost zero for the rest of the fight. boss fight with one HP and eight HP. Okay, at the very least, we do have one uh, one that's going to come from this. Hang on. Uh, one sec. No, okay. Fine. Launch the front line, end my turn. And now I'm just looking for the reap if I can get it. And we can indeed. Get him, Shara. Okay. Relic. Save it. Premies. If you end your turn with no cards in hand, leading hero gains one courage. Uh-oh. Uh, we now do have one brush in order to try and pick up a little bit more HP before we go into the final fight. If we find even a single Radiant Heart, we're probably in a reasonable position. 12 may be our best. That's the spot that I suspect would be our best, but give the rest of these a wee geese. No, that, that 12 is definitely it. Okay. 12 spaces, one Radiant Heart and an event. Actually, no. Uh, Radiant Heart and an Alchemist, please. Okay, well, we got another card. All right, all right. I'm just going to need teamwork for some extra block. I'm going to move my way straight to the boss because I'm almost entirely certain we're dead. And I would like to take another run at this. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna lunge, and then Ogre Cookie the guard. Oh boy. Uh, Dragon Spirit draws a card. I think we use the quick reflexes on Sirocco now so that we can afford to play an Ogre Soup instead this turn. You are kidding me. <laughs> Combo unavailable. Time to punch you a bunch. Okay, 16 incoming. Come on, we gotta be able to stand up against that, right? Right? Unfortunately, gotta do all my damage from the back line. I mean, it's not looking impossible. 25 is pretty threatening. Yikes, it's appropriately threatening as it seems. We are going to be losing one character. Wait, 19 without the vulnerability. Yep. We have literally exactly enough to survive one hit on Shara here, losing one power. That is okay as long as we keep the, the, the minions alive. Uh, repost. Ogre cookie, ogre soup, smoke bomb. Repost. Ogre cookie, ogre soup, smoke bomb. Yeah. 
buy myself a dagger with that. Good for a flex turn, if nothing else. Okay, guard, and then the dagger sets up a lower cost on teamwork. We're not going to lose Sirocco this turn. Remarkably. God, we're on such thin margins for everything. Three HP and one HP. All right. Hey, that Bullfrog Berserker is actually playable this turn. That's hilarious. Remarkably, I actually think I will get to play it as well. Should I have? A completely different question. I refuse to answer. <laughs> uh, I'll take that Ogre Soup. It's soup. It's soup with Ogre. Give you a Lacerate. And a Lunge Rate. Back to that back line. You are absolutely kidding me. We're going to get it. Oh, okay, well, next law is going to really be difficult. We're not going to have... We're going to have full HP, right? So we're, we're, we're cleared from this, and we've got an extra boost of power. But I spent a lot of money there just trying to make sure that I continued living right now, uh, which may risk my uh, long-term plan to not die. All right, treasure. Uh, it's 100% Mask of Chaos. We need to be able to continue pushing forward. After you play this, return this to the top of your deck at the end of the turn. I mean, look, if I did that with Ogre Cookie and then somehow decreased its cost, that'd be kind of wild. If I could put it in something that I could also then put the Primal Skull in, right, and play for four every single turn, that'd be pretty wild. Return all daggers in your dissolve pile to hand. We're not really a dagger deck. The only thing I really desperately want here is the fire. Actually, shield bash. No, no, no. Shield bash. I don't want shield bash. I want uh, phalanx. I, I mistook shield bash for phalanx there. I do want the fire breath, but more than that, I want the face stone. And not to have the other two cards in the deck, frankly. Mm, Royal Ink. You'll love to see a good Royal Ink right there. Nadam, what do you got? Magic dust needs to go into this deck. <sighs> Magic dust needs to go into this deck. Uh, Buckle up could totally go into this deck as well. I think I need to save the money for magic dust first, though. So it's worth noting, after you play this, return it to the top of your deck at the end of your turn, and this says dissolve. If it's dissolved, it doesn't go back to the top of the end, uh, deck at the end of the turn. It is too busy, not existing anymore. Um, Knight's Pauldron. First time each battle, the other hero would take lethal damage. Swap the heroes and gain 12 block. Pretty good pickup here for us, possibly. Uh, okay, so... A five, a five can't stretch me out to anywhere just yet. Like I'm six spaces from this, I'm six spaces from this. Okay, so let's look at a Vault of Wisdom, I think, first to try and pick up a little bit more uh, defense, uh, specifically Sirocco defense. So like, just like the 16, the two cost 16 block would be nice. Slice and dice. You kidding me? Attack for zero five times is exactly the kind of card that we want in the deck where Shara is doing what she's currently doing. Shara starts each battle with three courage. The shop charges 25% less gold. Or at the end of each battle, Sirocco heals eight life. Sirocco healing eight life at the end of each battle is huge. However, Shara starting each battle with three courage means our first turn has five energy. Which suddenly makes the whole, uh, the whole thing a lot more playable. Energy is actually our biggest problem, and it will continue to be because I'm not getting 
much better at generating it outside of things like that. I really wish I could have just taken Soroka heals there. I think we are going to be quicker to invalidate the healing being necessary than we are to invalidate the Soroka healing being necessary. <laughs> this is the exact fight you want, Slice and Dyson. Um... <laughs> You. Good one. I'll take my ten, thank you. That precision ink actually gets us to do the thing that I was mentioning before. Just take a six along to somewhere. So which direction do I want to go? That one is actually going to be unlocked by probably taking two precision inks there, getting this normal battle, and then trying to find my way out in the other direction. Uh, Ogre Belt, whenever this hero plays a card that costs two or more, gain four block. That's definitely what I want to start with here, I think. So let's get... That's five, one, five, one is five. Wait, do I want to do it spaces up or spaces down? Spaces up. Five, one. Okay, we got a hidden very well. It's fine that Fagoro just stole my hat. Especially if you're going to be sitting where I'm exactly planning to go right now. Yeah, 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 dullard. You absolute butt lord. All right, let's take this ogre belt. Pop that bad boy on the baddest of boys, Soroko. This will go nicely with my ear. Happy to get that fairy well pick up also. Plus one energy on the first two turns, as well as three courage for the first three turns. Uh, means that I have two turns now of five costs to be able to spam out. I'd love to go for another Vault of Wisdom. Do I do that right now? It's difficult to get up to the Sky Tower from the bottom here, but it's harder. I think I'm going to pop this early. Don't just reveal what the rune of ta the tower is about to reveal. What's over there? Eh, fine. Give me a good kind of idea of the kinds of things I wouldn't want. Dust just still sitting there, taunting me, tempting me. I could take that 10 and then use a single positioning to take that normal battle. Let's take a look. Looking for something to get me across this sky tower. Okay. Woo, boy. Bad first turn right there. Punch, 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 I guess. Not what we were hoping to see. 24 incoming. I can't really gain much defense at all this turn, so you know what? There you go. That's actually the most defense I could have gained this turn also. Guess I'll slice and dice you. Incoming here is 32. Let's... Repost and then teamwork our way back to the front line. Try to single thousand cuts, I think. Okay. So all but this final will full block, getting a bunch of daggers for our efforts. 
Ogre Soup, very bottom of the first cycle. Uh, it's also not in a great position to play it. Well, no, actually, no, it's in a totally fine position to play it. We can afford to. Which makes it good enough. All right, Bullfrog Berserker. I see you, friend. The start of each turn as well. So you're up to your 16 already. Um, I'm going to lunge to the front line. Use an ogre cookie to decrease the cost of this slice and dice for the back line. Hit. Hit. And then I will remain in the front line. We're going to have more damage dealt by those companions. And then we'll finish the fight off with the... Well, I mean, dagger or thousand cuts or any such is completely fine. Just as long as it kills the enemy and gets us the kobold fetish trigger. Come on, 22 gold. I don't want to ever talk about it. Okay, we do finally have an alchemist. Thank you. Another three reveal in a straight area. Other hero would take lethal damage, so Soroka will hold this. Goro will give us back the shield. Whenever this hero plays an ally, gain plus one power. This hero plays an ally, gain plus one power. Um... I mean, maybe Shara chooses to play some later. It doesn't... The plus one power on Soroka really doesn't matter that much. So I'll even give it to Shara despite the fact she doesn't have a way to trigger it yet. What's over that was there? such a huge connection. Oh my god. Gigantic pickup right there. 120 gold to transmute a card. Uh, Shara has really good damage opportunities already in Slice and Dice and Thousand Cuts. Uh, she does have some pretty good energy gain in the dissolving cards and stuff like that. She doesn't have that much draw. I honestly think we just throw one of these Soroko cards that we never want to play like a strike. I think twice. Fire Oil cast from the front line isn't awful but i do think think twice is just a nice card for us to have access to right now um although the big problem is like hmm, is what do i even care to combo that with like malay just so i can play it in the front line for zero easily to get three block is that good is that anything? Suitable. Three block can matter, sure. At the very least, it's a difference between one mana card negative deal seven damage versus zero mana card neutral gain three block. Uh, so here's a thing. How much do I need the magic dust? Wait, add Shara's power to this ally's spirit. I'll t okay, I'll tell you what happened when we took the Tiki, uh, is I, I was thinking, wait a second, okay, so what Shara ally is going to be playing? I could be playing the guy who generates the daggers. I could play the guy... Wait, there's one that synergizes with power. Oh, no, 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 but it gives you power equal to its spirit. That's the Master Swordman. The Battle Brother, however. The Battle Brother, however. We'll take the Battle Brother, however. Um, I think the Bronze Boomerang also might be a card that we want to throw, uh, or something that we want to throw instead into the Ogre Soup, just so we have the ability to sort that back into the pile. Or heck, 
Maybe we do it with the, the face stone. Because that is a scaling option. God, I actually really do want to do that with the face stone. Slice and dice is also hilarious for uh, the damage there as well. Very well. Okay. Let's see how that goes. Okay. We'll frog Berserker and then swap. Love being able to get that out on turn one. Ooh, Ogre Cookie for the thousand count right there. Actually, no. It's Ogre Cookie for the Ogre Soup. Uh, 6 5 times. Time for you to die. Thousand cuts. Time for you to die. Think twice for a wee bit more defense. We'll also guard. And look. Time to get a little bit more impact out there. Hello, Ogusu. Good to see you. Pop that on the back liner and then get a battle bronzer out there. Hmm. This would be better against the Avatar of Greed, certainly. Defend, defend. I'm still trying to leave this up to Shara to get the kill for the extra. Oh my god. Please, draw, kill. Draw the kill. Come on! <laughs> ah, all of Shara's damage cards are left to me. Uh, yeah, the enemy dies before I can do anything here, so. There you go. My allies are too big. So we've got two, three different scaling plans in this deck at this point. Oof. I mean, hey, look, it's good. It'll help, but still. Oof. Okay, that's great. Royal Ink down this line. We actually get a fairy well along the line as well, maybe. And we also unlock two normal battles to be able to take out here. Uh, there was an 80. There was an 80 in the store that I think I still wanted to buy. I think it's the buckle up. Do I really want that? My defense is proven kind of comfortable. I'll continue to assess that, I think. Hmm. Right, I'll smoke one my way to the back and start out drawing. Sure, let's go way back to the front then. Could have gotten a courage on Sirocco there actually if I did the the teamwork at the right time. I guess. Ogre cookie slice and dice makes most sense here. I'll be taking that courage. <sighs> Can I also have the unceasing top effect, please? I promise I'll do well with it. D sorry, good. I promise I'll do good. Because I cannot promise the other. Uh... Let's try and lower the damage of that back line as significantly as possible here. That'll happen. This one is about just trying to finish the fight as quick as I can here. I 
Unfortunately, we've already taken a lot of damage in Sirocco. That whole eight healing on Sirocco is looking like a pretty good option right now, isn't it? Uh, over that, we took quick reflexes, which saved our life a couple times. Although the eight health also could have saved our life a couple times, so I don't think I can make a direct comparison betwixt the two at this point. Take a normal battle. Spawn of Isanus really ought not be a problem for us. So we'll repost, smoke bomb, and then ogre suit the back line. I'll take those daggers. Perfect fuel for killing spawns of Itsanu. Incoming is 46 damage this turn. That's a lot. Thankfully, you do get the flex in pretty much exactly the right hand for it. There's no way I'm going to have enough damage here, right? Yeah, it's not going to happen. Wait. Actually, it does. I'm extremely surprised by that. I'd planned the whole turn around the fact that that wasn't going to work. I just ballparked the number in my head rather than immediately counting it out because if you count out every single number, man, things get, runs get long. Okay, now I'm looking for literally just one card draw. Get it. Lunge. That'll get us our extra gold. Perfection. My gosh. Absolutely flush with these royal inks. Uh, don't care up in that direction. So you got both those already. I actually may want to keep these inks for the next area. But I've got another enemy who's going to give me inks there. Let's go to a couple of these vaults of wisdom, maybe. I don't need another dragon spirit. Slam's like an exceedingly playable amount of damage. I actually don't even think I have anything I want to put the Primal Skull in at the moment because I don't have draw. A lot of the time I just end my turn around that point. I could take a Whirlwind, put that in the deck, get a little bit more AoE in here. Still something that I'm completely lacking. The only problem is it's AoE on a character that I don't really care about it that much. Giant amount of defense though. A lot of AoE next floor. Fine, right, I'll take one. Mountain Fist could be a huge amount of damage here. If nothing else, it's a little bit weak, but it's weak defensive. I can afford weak defensive right now. Horde Shell. When you gain a treasure, permanently increase the block value of that card by three. A bit late for us to find that. Mirror Image. Each time Shara deals damage, this deals the same amount of damage and loses a spirit. It's important to know that it loses that spirit. Otherwise, it looks like an incredible pickup. Uh, but now it's like... Fine. It's fine. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a worse way of dealing my power and damage to enemies than I already have in the deck. I'm kind of comfy without it. Cross Strike for attacking the enemy twice and gaining two courage. Honestly, Shara just needs a little bit more damage density so that she can actually draw damage as often as she'd like. Perfect. I'll take it. Also get a talent tier for that. Whenever you use a brush, reveal two adjacent talents at random. There's also fly weight. Whenever you end your turn with no cards in hand, Shara gains a power and guardian whenever either of the heroes plays a defend draw card. I don't think either of us play defends at all, literally. No, wait, Shara has a single copy of defend. So, ooh, that's valuable. That's weird. This gets less valuable as you replace things with the meta progression system. Hmm. Take fly weight. 
I'll draft a card as soon as I can get enough gold for one. Uh, uh, gosh. Four to the south. There we go. Okay, we didn't find anything there. That's fine, but I did need to free up that space because we're about to go into a normal combat where we are going to get something that sits there the vast majority of the time. Not a huge fan of this turn, I must say. It's a bunch of damage on a character that really doesn't have the ability to take that much. Start with that, and then do I want to lacerate? I guess. And then we'll... Teamwork our way away from there, keeping the on fire. Use an impact to draw a card here. Think twice for a bit more defense, thankfully. Okay, that could have been worse. Managed to bail out pretty hard there. Also, Radiant Hearts are looking pretty good with both characters missing about 20 HP here. Okay, Guard, Whirlwind. Mountain Fist. Also, Ogre Cookie into a Cross Strike. Finishing out the match. I see a Radiant Heart nearby as well, so we'll go pick that up now. Huh, <laughs> of course. Immediately after filling the space that it needed to go into. So how many Radiant Hearts do I have? One, two... I should have used these to try and go up in that direction, I guess. At least unlock something. Refreshing. Okay, we'll have a look at the vaults. No. Happy to turn those down. None of those really feel as impactful as I would like for another card edition at this point. 26, 22. Okay, so it's four more cards to get the next pick up there. Discard a card, gain an energy. Honestly, discarding cards is kind of good for us, right? Leaving no cards in hand. I can take the buckle up. Good, man. Okay. Saves me buying the buckle up in the shop for twice as much gold. Okay. Let's take out another elite. Or at least try. Cross strike's already lethal on one. Let's do the Mountain Fist. Let's actually throw 33 damage at him. 29, 29. It was the... Yeah, the 33 is the four extra block we get after it resolves from Ogre Belt that is not included in the resolution of the Mountain Fist's damage. Yep. I was waiting for teamwork to be set up there. Thank you. Let's leave no cards in hand so I can pick up this power. Wee bit of scaling, but more than nothing. Ogre Cookie hits the Ogre Soup. We can flex our way into, I guess, some defense? Gosh, is that enough defense? That's almost enough defense, actually. I was really expecting that to do worse, frankly. Ogre Soup sets up for a... Ooh! Baby! Hell of a turn right there. Suddenly dropping the damage. And we've even got the Battle Brother there ready to drop more. One more multi-hit will get the end of this fight, though.
Literally not being able to kill a single enemy this turn is very, uh, not good. I also can't, well, I can get Soroko to the front, but I have to use Soroko's quick reflexes to do so, and I think I just absolutely must. Uh, all right, I'm an Ogre Cookie, another Ogre Suit. Use a repost, then a flex, then set you back to the front line instead. The enemy frontliner in the Rakoan shield mate will die, but all the rest of that's come through. Loud and clear. You absolutely must give me some of Shara's cards, please. <laughs> it is damned near a requirement of your job. Mm-hmm. 28 five times, I think it'd give you enough here. Yeah, it felt like it probably was. This hero has plus one power. That's Shara all the way, baby. I think I'm going to take that and actually use it as a preemptive heal here just because of the amount of HP on Soroka. Ogre Soup, Battle Brother, Teamwork. You take seven. Honestly, you are definitely going to be taking more. The Berserker is no longer a three times on this attack, whereas it used to be. Appreciate that, certainly. I think I uh, Ogre Soup and Slice and Dice. Get two power this turn, so we'll take some damage as a result of that, but... Honestly, this is going to get us so much further in the fight. End it so much quicker. We take one damage to do that option. It also gets the Ogre Cookie uh, possibly synergizing with the Ogre Soup. There it is. I could draw the kill. Yeah, it wasn't unlikely, but... Wait, is this still the kill? Ogre soup yourself, 13 damage out. No. This will generate fall as well, so it's fine. This is one final opportunity to... There we go. That reap gold. Can I go into the boss fight on this floor right now with these? That's my stats. Or do I have to pop a brush or two? I can pop a brush over here. Get access to another card pick. 13 spaces. 13 spaces is a lot of spaces. Two more card picks and we got a Radiant Heart. Look, that's pretty much exactly what I asked for. Nice. We'll have a look at each. Sure. Yes. I mean, honestly, having a little bit of AoE that benefits from our strength. It's relevant. Outlaw is a little less relevant, despite the fact that it's 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 pretty good for a lot of fights next floor. Uh, but the greed boss is gonna make me kind of regret it a little bit. Headbang to your hand, game block equal to twice the number of the head. Yeah, I'm just Excellent. gonna take a pierce. We'll look at the next. Whenever the heroes swap deal damage to all enemies equal to this ally's spirit, unfortunately not really great here unless we can get your spirit up pretty high. Barrage not really necessary, rock out neither. 
Yeah, that's enough. That's enough investment for me. At the start of the next floor, we're also going to get another ink. So we did want to have one empty ink space going in there. Two more cards will get me my next level up. Very much hoping to see the... You can continue playing cards if you have no cards in hand. Just draw a card if you have no cards in hand, rather. Cage Launcher. Reduce the leading hero's power by... By, uh, by three, sorry. Oh, frog. So that's the effect you intend to do this turn? Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Okay, so it's probably going to take... Uh... Oh, man. <laughs> uh, powers of two. Okay, so two, four, six, eight. 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. Okay, so nine turns in the future, we're doing 256 per hit. So one short of that should be reasonable amount of damage to supplement with just our units damage. So this is a seven turn timer-ish. Eight turn timer-ish for the boss. Oh, it's just a reduction of that power while that's active. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, reduce the hero's block by 10 before attacking. You're not attacking those, so... Thanks. I'll deal as much as I can. Oi! This one's rough. Uh, inflict vulnerable and tripped, then swap the heroes before attacking. So you're making vulnerable the target you aren't attacking? Hmm? It seems a, bit, a little bit uh, bass backwards right there. Who do I want to leave out in front then? Shara. So repost at the end of the turn. I should use flex as well. Oops. Oh, never mind. Maybe that would go zero. Perfect. Oh, I could have I could have forced that as well by playing the hand in the right order. No way I couldn't. Because if I wanted to uh, swear I could have been free. Yeah, okay. Never mind. That's fine. Um a gray soup. So you inflict vulnerability and tripped on the frontliner, uh, and then you attack the other one instead. I mean, look. It's a hell of a play. Disintegration laser against us. Let's go for the dragon spirit first. Love to Ogre Cookie Ogre Soup. I should also get Battle Brother out there. It's too much damage to not do. I want to use the daggers right now as well. No, I got an Ogre Soup coming in next turn also. Good attack. We're now using our health as a resource to round out the rest of this fight. Let's swap the heroes before attacking as well. Got it. Which means you will attack someone who is vulnerable here as well. Hmm. There you go. And that'll do it. Unfortunately, I can't get the kill specifically here with Shara, so we just end the turn and then watch. As the bullfrog gets it. Okay, 
Give me the gem of evolution. I want the bullfrog to start with five more spirit. Let's do it. I, I, come on. I made a long investment play on floor one with literally the first selection that I made in a vault of wisdom. I want it to pay off. Lemmy, Lemmy, let. Speaking of Lemmy, Callum's amulet at the start of battle. Add four columns prayer to the deck. You get to draw two cards and you dissolve that bad boy right there. Kaleidoscopic Prism. After you play this, shuffle three copies into your discard pile with no gems. What do I want in there? Nothing so far. I mean... You know what? I could probably actually put that into the... Uh, where are you? Slice and Dice. Right? And then I only play the Slice and Dice for the first time when I have, like, 30 power. And then, obviously, I want as many Slices and Dices as I can possibly get. I'll take it. We'll see. The Ancient Lands of Tavern. Get that royal ink. Ooh! Krog's Crown, the first time this uh, each turn, rather, this hero plays a card that costs two or more, draw two cards. Love it. And then out here, we have a legendary Calm's Belt. After playing 15 cards in battle, draw a card and gain energy at the start of each turn. That is very accessible for us. Uh, if I beat this enemy, I can use a Royal Ink in order to go down here, get a five gap, and then I only need three to get up to the Calm's Belt. Love it. That's definitely our plan. See what Nardum has. This costs three less. The Singularity is available here for Nardum. Uh, this costs three less. I mean, I don't know where that's going to go. Unstable Concoction, gain eight, dissolve every card you play this turn. Doesn't dissolve itself. Flame of Ignis, whenever a card grants you an energy, gain an extra energy. Whenever heroes add a below 50% uh, HP, they gain three power. 10 extra max life, as well as a full heal. Drop of Echoes, whenever you play this, add a zero cost card to your hand with no gems. I mean, I guess I could put another Bullfrog Berserker in there. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what uh, what wants each of these. Do I, do I look enough at the cards? Yeah, I looked enough at the cards. Those aren't things that I'm like gone buck wild about. Okay, let's just go for the normal battle. Let's just go. I feel like it's Bullrog Berserker and just leave Column's Prayer. Although the Berserker is very slow in fights like these for us right now. We do just kind of want to get to our Ogre stuff as quickly as we can. Okay, we gotta do some swapping. Buckle up our way to the front line. Perfect. Let's double swap with a smoke bomb. Swap once more back to the front. Once more back into the fray. Oh, right. So the six was just two per stack of the commandants. Got it. There's the Yoga Super Cookie. Absolutely gonna have to do that. Dragon Spirit for another draw, as well as consistent ongoing energy gain. Throw a flex and then whirlwind you to the front line. Throw a dagger as well for a wee bit more. Healthy. Oh, deck's not going fast enough. It's just a wee bit too slow. I need like another smoke bomb or two, I think. Or stand behind me, the two cost 16 block. Obviously, two costs for 21 block for us because of the... Wait, actually, does Ogre Belt give us four block from playing cards that are two or cost more because of the Tyrion Shield? Because the Tyrion Shield does increase the value of the Fortifying Brew. I don't think it does. 
but it would be consistent for it to. So this is giving me five block and then four block. Okay, so it's giving me five block from the whirlwind, but it's only giving me four from the ogre's belt. That should be five. That was fun! You scale large. Honestly, like my best chance here may be uh oh no consumable slot for that. That was that was a bad idea on my part. Oops. Uh one of the best things I can probably do here might be one sec. Oh god, that's so far away. It's a five and a three. One of the best things I can do here might actually just be getting those, the the two relics that are currently on the field, and then bouncing the absolute hell out of here. No. All right, Sky Tower. Hmm. Is it too late to take advantage of the Eye of Apex? And if I used it, what would I use it in? It is. It's too late. I'm going to show my belly and see if I get a different hunting. And I do. Uh, I didn't just get the Hunter's Mask. I've now got instead the Hunting Spear. This hero gains two power while in the back row. You're often in the back row. Have a little bit more power while you're there. Yeah, that gap is a little rough. May have to take on another normal fight in order to be able to access it. Uh, throw another strike. Looking for a defend. Yeah. Teamwork that draws a card is real good. And I also want to try and make it lower cost as well. Like a zero cost. This works. I'm going to need a, uh, the ability in the final fight to generate extra energy without using the coins that the enemy will be giving me access to. Suitable. So Dragon Spirit wants one of those, and I think the other one is going to go into that teamwork as well. Very well. Let's start our direction up towards Krog as well, just in case we happen to see something there that changes our mind. Alchemist could do it. All cards in the final fight are going to cost two more. Sorry, one more. So any of these already costs two, which gives us some block. Like I could just do that. I think I will. This works. That's a hard upgrade on the strike that we otherwise had in that space. So I can hardly complain. If I take this, I can then use the brush in order to access that sky tower. Okay. You can get a lot of value out of a giant amount of defense this turn. Can you please give me some Shara cards? Like, I swear I have them. I'll play Battle Brother in order to then not be able to play Teamwork, unfortunately, because they're in the wrong position for it. That's... Oh. Buckle up. Hit Teamwork. No, hit Guard. That's okay, I guess, though. Alright, cop the Mountain Fist. Is our deck really that unbalanced in terms of Sirocco? I guess. I didn't think it was, but I guess. Smoke bomb. And teamwork. 
Ogre suit the back line and take my extra 15 block on this turn, I think. I think it's possible that I managed to get through the rest of the battle without taking any. Okay, thank you. Now we have the ability to just... Dragon Spirit. Bunch of energy. So 55 to the front line there. Lex into this lunge. We have a bit more defense available. <sighs> Another radiant heart or two, please. Before the final fight. Would be nice. Beautiful. We have the noble ink. That's actually good. Totally fine too. Ah, I found a bunch of blank space there that did nothing, unfortunately. But we did find the hidden very well that I was asking for. Now we're getting two energy on the first two turns. First two turns? On your first turn and then one energy every other turn. I've already done both of the explosions on this map, so. Hmm. Ah! Okay, yeah, an event as well as a Radiant Heart is definitely worth my time. Lands could this fairy be from? Golden fairy? Hell yes! Absolutely we can kill you! These columns prayers are going to be a little harder in the boss fight, but they were so useful on the way there, they definitely earned their way into the deck. <gasps> I was about to say, that's supposed to draw a card. So much energy. Buckle up. Lunge. Lacerate. Throw a smoke bomb as well. And then the perfect amount was set up. Unfortunately, you had to ruin it and deal 70 instead. Yeah, my deck has to be hard, imbalanced in favor of Soroka right now. It has to be. That's the only thing that explains every hand draw being only Soroka cards somehow. Uh, okay. My way into this front line. Okay, at least we have the 28 damage twice in the deck. Are they even going to be enough, though? I mean, between that and the Battle Brother and everything else, I think it will be. Back to the front. 29 twice? Hell yeah. We managed to also pick up our plus 10 from getting the kill with uh, Shara there, I believe. I don't want to do a bunch of normal fights and get that narrative, but I think I may want to in the end. Oh, God. I oh. really think the best thing is probably just going straight to the boss. It's also not like we're being threatened ridiculously. This will go nicely with my earring. All right, what do you got? Let's take a look. You could have just said nothing. When you play this at a zero cost copy to your hand with no gems. I mean, that is kind of just instantaneous double damage instead of kaleidoscopic, right? 
uh, if I'm putting it into the slice and dice. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 out of my 24 cards are Shara. What? How do I only ever draw Sirocco cards? Um, I need to look at some more card stores, I think. Some more Vaults of Wisdom. Hard pass. Thank you. We've got a lot of ideas of what we want from Vaults of Wisdom at this point, so it's very easy to just stalk them. Hard pass, not going to be impactful enough. We're thinking about preparing for the uh, greed fight specifically. Take like a hammer time. There are some turns where I'll have the ability to generate a ridiculous amount of energy and hammer time will come in clutch there. This one's... Yes. Then we... Right? Yeah. Teamwork? I should have passed some cuts before the teamwork, I guess. Ogre Cookie onto Buckle Up makes Bullfrog playable. And Buckle Up permanently playable. And we also get an extra power on Shara for having an empty hand at the end of the turn. Basically as well as it possibly could have gone for us. Let's draw some cards from Krogs. bit extra block out of the flex because it triggers every single time it hits an enemy. Take some extra defense and a little less damage on that bad boy there. Hmm. Hey, we would be very helpful right now. Do I ogre suit myself? I really don't want to have to do that. So Ogre Soup on you, that'd be 19 AoE. It does have the ability to kill the Lotus in the back line if it does that. Fine. Of course it's 18. That's how numbers work. Oops. Uh, hammer down for 76. I think we'll just be the end of this turn, though. Oh, you summoned two things. Okay, you're dead. Nice work. Huh? Return all destroyed creatures to the field. Oh, so you just summoned an extra one. You returned one and summoned an extra one. That makes sense. That said, I think the rest of it will clear out eventually. I mean, three gets us that extra battle over there. So what? I, I have the ability to go to all of the, the normal fights on the map at this point. Not certain I really uh, need to, but sure. Lay a weapon on the forge, add a socket to a card of your choice. That could be interesting because we have a couple of these that have a single socket in them that would happily hold another. Um, 
I mean, we could have the Ogre Suit be zero cost. Or one cost by default, rather. Okay, yeah, this narrative, it's it's actually relatively large in impact here. Not that the narratives wouldn't be, it's like, as in continuing this floor in order to at least make advantage of this narrative has had a dramatic impact. I want a zero cost copy of the card. Yeah, that's way better. Suitable. That'll go there, and then yeah, we're doing the this slice works. and dice kaleidoscopic. Shara even just said this works. That's her vote of confidence in it. Hello, Ogre Soup. Let's cut you a thousand times. I think I'll murder you as well. Get another card draw, just keep going. I think I'm really going to be able to buy anything much more impactful here. Oh my god, this, this is so much power. Unlimited power. I think I found the way that we're going to get around this greedy boy. I think it's demonstrated its value and its ability enough times over. I also think it, you know, closes fights quite quickly, so it's not too much of an issue to push my luck a little. I saw a load of block right there. Thirty-two incoming. Whole mess of columns prayers. Ah, right, because that's in melee. Doesn't have to have the combo set up. Keep getting about that. All right, let's ogre cookie the whirlwind. I think. Make that a zero cost easy return. Buckle up so you can get something zero costed that's effective here. Ooh, and we do indeed. That Mountain Fist is a zero costed card. Okay. Now lunge the frontliner to set up a piercing. Just trying to get some of that backliner down. I'll do it. Got complete control over this find at this point. Which, are we about to lose that complete control? Woof. If any hand was going to do it, this would certainly be part of it. Get a couple stacks of power on that back line. Unfortunately, do not have the ability to trigger any of the others here. 17 five times is definitely enough to kill the frontliner, drawing us a card, gaining some energy, also meaning our frontliner is set up for melee and combo for the sake of, uh, for the sake of teamwork, but still doesn't have the ability to actually utilize that. Um, I mean, look, let's just kill you next, lowering the incoming damage again. Buckle up does hit the teamwork, okay, and now we get a bunch of energy back and get even more energy back with the... Next pickup. Although we didn't really have too much damage we could do out. Never mind. We did. Bullfrog Berserker is not any more of the game plan, unfortunately. But God, I really tried. Come on, you have to admit, I tried. I gave it my absolute all.
20 spaces completely blank. Frankly, it's just a little rude. Okay, we got a reduction on something that actually kind of wanted it. Good turn. Before I Ogre Soup, I'll Dragon Spirit so that I have enough energy for pretty much whatever I want to do. Okay. Repost into Lacerate sets up teamwork for the back line. Clash again. More frontline damage and a Mountain Fist. So I got one more elite fight that we have to do again. All elite fights are mandatory, so I wouldn't be able to just path my way around it if I wanted to. One dagger makes teamwork cost a little less. If we can generate all of our energy and not rely at all on the doomed coins, it's going to be a pretty effective strategy. Slice and dice, and then it shuffles its way back into the draw pile, which I was going to draw out with the column's prayers if I had any need. Alas, a lack of need. Alright, gemstone pick up. Attack the leading enemy for damage equal to your block. This costs three less. I mean, look, the Blood Diamond could do double damage. Hmm, no. Singularity, make the Cross Strike. Actually, no, make the Thousand Cuts cost zero. Very it will well. cost three in the final fight by default, so it is actually still managing to benefit from the entirety of that there. For two twice to discard a card. I mean, that's a good pickup. But I don't want to get rid of the doomed coin in my hand. But I will need to discard some cards. Maybe I want that. It's also another talent tier. Rick Bond, they both get plus one power. Whenever Shara adds a dagger, she has twice as many. Soroka has plus one max life for every card in your deck. 26 extra max life on Soroka? Does that come with current life? If it does, I definitely want that. It does. Oh, and Column's Prayer is just going to be on the screen forever. All right, well, let's not spend too much longer here. Let's take on this fight. Make our way out. Just making sure I see this right. That is 51 damage on turn one you intend to do. God. Twelve damage leading hero for all those card players. Sure, I'm just gonna get some more defense. to think twice. God, it's 12 up and 12... Sorry, it's 13 up and 12 down.
I mean, I guess I have some scaling damage on the board, but I'm going to want to kill you a lot faster if you're going to do stuff like that. I have to play five cards this turn as well, unfortunately. Pierce and then buckle up. We've still got Radiant Hearts around, but I can't take too much more damage here. It's the teamwork and Oka Soup. I'm gonna Shadow Strike the Lacerate away. Setting up a... Teamwork which has dreams that work. 100 damage from Hammer Time is nice. I don't think it's better than getting the power there. Okay, and then I'm leaving these tools in the previous cycle of the deck using Column's Prayer to draw into the new cycle. Sure, Dragon Spirit and Teamwork just mean we keep going. Cookie on cross strike. And 130. That's lethal. Now that's what I'm talking about. What do we get? Come on, Synergistic. First time you just got a card each turn, draw a card. Eh? Not nothing. Okay, and then positioning, positioning across. I'll hold 500 to the end, right? Still nothing here I care about at all. Still nothing there I care about. All right, let's go. Whoa, hang on. Let's patch up. Refreshing. Very quickly use all of those. And then I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to go to the boss battle, and then I'm going to click this, and I'll use... Nice. Okay. There used to be some sort of a glitch where I had the ability to just shortcut a distance by clicking there and then using a different item, and then it would alter... Like, it would trigger the battle that I was on my way to. It's a weird one. Can't be used in battle anyway, so... It's the right time to get it out. one more to play. So, wait. Oh, I guess we're not in the right position. That's so annoying. I think I have to use a doomed coin this turn. But then it'll stop me from drawing any more cards. If I tried to make teamwork cost less with the Ogre Cookie this turn, and that's what I accomplished. I don't really want to slice and dice here. They're going to the discard pile. I can afford to. Also, I do really want to empty my hand. Twenty-eight. Okay. Hopefully, Dragon Spirit's available to play at the very start of the turn as well. 
Uh, nope, not the Doom Coin Please just play the columns instead. And again. Oh, wait. So this singularity is reduced three from the cost, got down to uh, zero. Sorry, reduced three, three from the cost of two, got it down to zero, and then you increased it again by one after the fact. So your Duke of Excess happens after gems? Don't love that. Don't love that. Uh, yeah, not, not how... Like, both of them are valid interactions, but it should interact the other way. Because then you have more ways to actually play around it by trying to reduce the cost of things, like a zero cost, trying to reduce its cost. It, 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 it enters interesting plays as well as is more player friendly to be in the opposite direction for those. The Shadow Strike a doomed coin out of hand. God. Also, drawing a bunch of cards. Yeah. I'm fine taking damage to you, right? There's nothing you'll do. Not specifically. Tripped. There's Ogre Soup. Love to see it. Don't have the ability to use it as well as the Bullfrog Berserker in this turn, but I think we do just focus on your Ogre Soup. Giant cycle of the deck right there. Hard pass for the rest of that. So you can see we get to discard eight full cards. Basically, we are a full hand into the next deck cycle. Which is exactly where we want to be right now. I think we will use a doomed coin this turn. Then we'll ogre soup you a couple times. It should be slice and dice, slice and dice and thousand cuts, I think. And remember, there are two more slices and dice in the draw pile. I could have, at the end of that turn, used Soroko swap forward. I don't think it's going to be necessary. Doomed coin. Doomed coin. It's hammer time. Okay. I felt like... Maybe around halfway through the second floor, I was still sweating bullets at uh, exactly how that was going to resolve in the end. But I probably could have approached it relatively early when I, access, uh, when I accessed the third floor. I'm going to try and get a little bit better at making that kind of an estimation because it's going to give me the ability uh, not only to reduce the complexity of the final floor if it doesn't need to be as complex as it is, right? Like... A, a large amount of those just kind of doing a, a bunch of working that doesn't add anything to the correct answer that you could ultimately get at the end, uh, as well as makes the episode just a just a just a teensy bit more manageable in terms of its size, which makes them a lot easier to batch record. But hey, that's all meta considerations at the moment. Uh, look at that button. My name is Ben Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Rogue Book. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves. There's a playlist in the top left, as well as a YouTube recommendation directly below and names of the folks. So generously supporting the Republic over at patreon.com slash Rhapsody Plays, streaming through at the moment. I'd like to say and a special thanks to Moms. Appreciate it. Enjoy remotes. Ah, enjoy remotes. That's a stream thing. <laughs>